أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وبه نستعين وصلى الله على محمد وآل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين أعظم الله أجورنا وأجوركم May the peace and blessings of Allah be upon you on this holy night and may Allah magnify um, the reward um, that is to be had on this night through appreciating um, that which befell his uh, saints um, and true servants on this night. First and foremost we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for this beautiful invitation this opportunity to realign our hearts with Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a possessive creator of ours. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by his nature is always on the lookout for his servant to turn back to him and to appreciate how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is like that caring mother who looks over that sleeping child seeing is there maybe a water they can get for that child is there a blanket that maybe they can bring for that child is there some sweat on the forehead of that child that they can wipe away that is the nature of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah's love for us um, is beyond comprehension and completely unfathomable but these are the nights when we are able to get a sense of appreciation of that and in our hearts um, begin to value this relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because throughout the year we are under the influence and the duress of our soul our soul is that conniving incredibly uh, ingenious creation of God that knows exactly the excuse to provide precisely the justification to offer the reason that we need to hear to avoid doing what we need to do and we have to live with that voice day in day out it knows us better than ourselves and it is an expert and a pro at a, getting us to do what we shouldn't do. So throughout the year we have this justifying device walking around with us. When it comes to worshipping Allah at night it says you're tired. When it comes to worshipping Allah in the morning it says you're busy you have to go to work. When it comes to praying at lunchtime it says you have to have your lunch to get back to your work. When it comes to praying to Allah when you finish work it says you have to rush home to meet your family. When you come home, it tells you you have to have dinner now. When you finish your dinner, it says you now need to relax. So it is always two steps ahead of us. It always knows exactly how to guile us and how to deceive us. But on these holy nights, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala creates a special ambiance and a special atmosphere in which we begin to gain some clarity over what has been happening over this period of time. The way in which we have let ourselves down the way in which we have let the worst part of us get the better of us and how we have wasted opportunities, how we have failed ourselves and failed all those around us. These are those magical nights when we begin to get a realization of exactly the state of play. And this is the blessing of these nights where we look back at our lives and we say that what I wanted to become I haven't achieved. What I am fooling myself that I will become will never materialize. In a way, we begin to wake up and realize exactly what is happening. For once, that mirror is put in front of us, the dust is removed from it and the light is switched on and we look right between our own eyes and we see what we have become. These are those nights when we become real and frank with ourselves. All of that justification and rationalization is good to no one. No one wants to hear it, no one wants to know about it. So why do we tell ourselves and kid ourselves throughout the year? This is a time when we turn back to Allah and we say to Allah, I am what I am. I have achieved what I have achieved. And we begin to change the compass of our hearts. We begin to change our frame of mind. We look at life in a different way. So these nights are the most blessed of nights when we can become frank and truthful for once with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is why these nights are filled with istighfar. These are why we, all our books are full of these types of supplications because this is what is monastic on these nights where we look back to Allah and we say to Allah that enough is enough. The line needs to be drawn in the sand that I have to come back to you, Ya Allah. The pain is too hard. The burden is too great to carry. 
the weight is too much for my back to take. These are the nights when we realize that this is what Allah wants to hear from us. It is with this frame of mind that we are then able to communicate with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We need to first realize exactly what is happening so that we can then be real with Allah. So this is the frame of mind we need to have as we enter into these holy nights. To realize that this is the real dua. The real destiny that we want, that decree that we all search for, is for Allah to facilitate a year and a lifetime of working upon our souls. Everything else is secondary and tertiary. Whether you drive that flash car or you are in that lovely house, what is the benefit of that if your internal house is derelict and in decay? What is the benefit if your mind is corrupted and polluted? How will those books on those lovely bookshelves be of any use or worth to you? Nothing material has any significance or consequence for the one who has failed his own soul. So this is the night when we turn back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Our real goal is to be one with Allah, to change our being, to change our consciousness. This is how we are meant to look at these nights. And in that vein, we find Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala historically arranging events that we find who we should be like and who we should not be like on this night. We find that even history is there to remind us of what we can be and what we cannot be. What we should be and what we should not be. We find on the one hand the one who by all measures is worthy of being the proof of Allah. If ever you wanted a mirror to see that reflection of Allah, you would look at Ali ibn Abi Talib. <laughs> if ever you wanted to know virtue, Allah made it known through this individual. So we find on this night, we reflect on the way this man lived and the way this man passed and the way this man died. He was the one who from the moment of his coming into this world, he was right in the depth of Allah's worship. He, because his whole life was surrounded and centered upon Allah, was born in the house of Allah. But that house took pride in him being born in it, because the qalb of insan is the real haram of Allah. So we find that Ali ibn Abi Talib from day one was waiting. He had to endure he had to tolerate, he had to bear the trials and tribulations of this world. But his greatest trial and his greatest tribulation was the fact that he was kept away from Allah. Which is why after all the torment he faced, that towards the end of his life after Fajr prayers, he would sit in Masjid Kufa and look at the world. And people would have no idea who this man was. They would walk past him and go on with their daily lives. But he would lament at what would come of this world how his great companions had faded away and had gone into the abyss of this historical narrative. <coughs> but this was a man who knew Allah's worth. And for him, when he was taken from this world, for him this was the real fall. This was the real success that he had achieved. Because for once his mission had been accomplished. He had done what he was sent to do. And he was able to then freely fly that, like that bird without any shackles back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we find that this is what we are to aspire for on this night. But Allah also works in opposites. So we have the polar reality of this, where we have Ibn Muljim, who is the one who was from a group of people who were outwardly as religious as one could ever imagine. They would spend the nights in prayer, the days in fasting, they would read the Quran, but their intellects were zero to nothing, which is why they were deceived by the most fallacious of things and they somehow developed enmity for the greatest and most beloved of people. So we find that Ibn Muljim was from this type of school of thought and in addition to that he was deceived by his lower desires. He fell in love and was enchanted by a woman whose father and brother was, were killed in a battle that Imam Ali waged and so she put him up to killing the greatest men of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the greatest warriors and lions of Allah, she enchanted him and set him up for the greatest fall. So he had the deceit and the conceit to lay in the masjid with a sword under his belly and committed the greatest of atrocities. But in a 
state of numbness and intellectual absence because he was so consumed by his fallacious ideas and his um, fastidious wants for this world. So we find that Allah has given us the opposite of if we do not train our soul, this is what we can become. That when a person who is the haqiqah of salah is praying salah, the reality of prayer is praying, we strike him. But yet we find the humanity of Imam Ali on that night, that he restrains his companions from being harmful or harsh to this person who is deserved of all uh, what he deserves. But he still had that restraint at that moment of pain and agony. That is the real humanity of a person when they're in that moment and in that hour their true colors shine through. So we find that this is a night where Imam Ali does not want our empty sentiments. He wants us to have a firm determination in our hearts to become like him. To realize how he is a paragon of virtue and a light of and a beacon of what man is meant to be. And we realize uh, the juxtaposition and the polar opposite in his enemies who are worthless and futile. If Allah didn't give them any creation, they would hold no um, worth in the eyes of anyone. So we find that this is a night to reflect on what we have fallen short in and for us to pay our allegiance to the men of virtue and those of the ultimate character. And we ask from Allah that on these holy nights He makes us people of virtue, people who have conquered their soul, people who have become the real guardians over their kingdom and they create a dynasty inside themselves based upon virtue and good qualities and that we can inshallah see through the rest of this holy month in the remembrance of Allah in uh, the remembrance of those who are beloved to Allah and that we finish this month and we finish our lives in the praise and in the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa akhir da'wana an alhamdulillah rabbil alameen wa salatu wa salam ala muhammad wa ala bayti al-tayyibin al-tahirin Allahumma